we are wrapping up our summer viral season. It's more than a series, it's a season. And it's pretty bittersweet. I've really enjoyed cracking up laughing with you guys over some some viral videos. Um, But we're going to hop into some scripture, and then I'm going to let you know what we're talking about this morning. So let's go to James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. It says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect, that doesn't mean without flaw, that means whole, complete, maturated, that you may be perfect, incomplete, lacking in nothing. The title of today's message, and I actually had the honor and privilege of sharing some of this with our family at RPM a couple weeks ago. RPM, shout out. Woo woo. <laughs> the title of today's message is Stay Down. Stay Down down 40 days and 40 nights let's pray god i thank you so much for each and every individual each and every life each and every story represented in this room and i pray right now that every word that's spoken that you speak as every word is being spoken because it's not about the stage and the lights and the mic and these words that i've concocted but it's about the words that you want to speak to people in this room Jesus, we love you. We give you everything. We want to follow you with everything that we have because we believe not only what you want to do in us, but we believe in what you want to do through us for other people, for our communities, for our homes. So we love you and we thank you and we lock in this morning and we're excited about your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. Stay down. Stay down. Show of hands. Who's from Baton Rouge in here? Born and raised. Raise them high. Raise them like you're proud. There's so much. Somebody's like, mm, I was trying to keep that under wraps. Okay, cool. Raise your hands if you grew up on rap music. Uh, see, I knew y'all was going to front. I, I was, I was just kind of. But for real, who grew up on rap music? Who grew up on hip-hop music? Okay, okay. Very nice. Well, if you're from Baton Rouge and you grew up on rap music, you may know some of these coined phrases that I'm about to say. Maybe. We'll see. And if not, I'll teach it to you. Who's heard of the term... Ten toes down. My guys. Y'all heard the, the subtle chuckles of affirmation? Ten toes down. Okay. <clears throat> what about this one? And this one has my favorite word in it. So I really like this one. Stand on business. Who done heard that? Oh, yeah. Stand on business. Here's the thing about these three terms. They all generally mean the same thing. Ten toes down. Stand on business. Stay down. They generally all mean one thing. Let me explain to you. They mean no matter what happens... Whatever rain is falling, whatever wind is blowing, whatever waves are crashing in your life, in my life, in our life, that we are to stand firm, strong, fully rooted in what we believe without.
without wavering. I learned that from rap music. <laughs> you know, my mom, she was supposed to be here. My mom's here every time I speak. And she texted me this morning. She was like, oh, baby, I don't feel good. <laughs> I was like, excuses. I'm joking. Um, but she texted me she couldn't be here. I really wish she could because she pretty much makes uh, every sermon that I speak. Um, she gets 40 cameos, and that's kind of her. <laughs> she kind of makes sure that I, I plug her every sermon. But... um. <laughs> But, but yeah, my mom is single-handedly the reason why I am obsessed with rap music till this day. When I was growing up playing sports, my mom had what was called a pump it up mix. Pump it up mix. So I was in the car, this is me. Pumping it up with moms. And on this pump it up mix was an array of artists. It was, it was artists everywhere from a little Aerosmith, all right? A little Elton John, a little Queen, and Cash Money Records taking over for the 99-2000s. Glory to God. <laughs> that was my upbringing. My mom is why my taste is so eclectic. She's also to blame why I step on this platform week in and week out, seemingly culturally confused. <laughs> like, I don't quite know where I'm from and who I am and where I'm going. She's to blame for that. So since we're in our viral series, I got three viral videos for you guys this morning. Three, they're super quick. And to be honest, none of these videos have super deep spiritual implications. But it will set the tone for our hip hop inspired message today. And these are videos of kids who clearly were raised by parents who raised them in hip hop. Let's play the first one. That was cute. Before we play the next one, this next one is a video of two little boys. They're about nine, ten, and they're in an intense rap battle. Intense rap battle. Check this out. A GTR is tough. That's tough. All right, this last one. This may be my favorite video currently on the interwebs. This video is of a darling little girl who does not say one real word the entire video. But the heart's real, the passion's real. The swagger is real. You could turn up a little bit to this one. This one is entitled Baby with Bars. We need to get her a Purpose Church ASAP. <laughs> I heard some tongues in there. I heard some. No, I'm joking. Um, stay down. 
Stay down. You know, <clears throat> this reminds me of a time in my life when I was about the same age as those two little boys in that video, in the rap battle video, about nine, 10. And uh, I had an experience where I should have stayed down. Down on the ground, that is. It goes like this. It was a crisp, blue-skied Saturday evening afternoon in my neighborhood. And all the kids were out. And when I mean all the kids were out, they were all out. So much so, we, the kids of the block, didn't really recognize about 75% of these kids. We thought they were like following some North Star and like navigating from the four corners of the earth. It was strange. But we took advantage of the moment. So we're outside playing. We're playing every game imaginable, obviously. Basketball, football, soccer, cricket. I mean, Sudoku. Like, we just was literally playing everything, right? And after we exhausted the game tank, my cousin, who lived across the street from me, perks up. He goes, <gasps> he goes, I know what we can do. And we're all like, what? He goes, let's race our bikes. So we were hyped. He has this long street that runs on the side of his house. And so my thought, or my, actually, I, I may have commented something. I was a snarky 10-year-old. I may have commented something along the lines of like, <laughs> Oh, cousin, you don't want that kind of smoke. I was the fastest racer on the block. I had a mongoose. <laughs> Me and Pastor Chad were just talking about these mongooses. So anyway, boom. We're lined up. It's intense. It's, it, we're lined up like the Kentucky Derby. Except we're in pairs. So, pew! First pair goes. Pew. Pew. Second pair goes. Pew. Third pair goes. Now, I am in the fifth pair. The fourth pair, in, in lane one, you would say, was a cool kid. His name was Darian. Darian was a bit older than us. He wasn't from the block. He would come visit maybe once, two weekends out of the month. Darian is in lane one and destroying the kid in lane two. I mean, he's gone. It's, pure. it's like, it was like the kid wasn't even there. Darian smoking this kid, right? And like I said, the block is packed this Saturday afternoon, filled with kids. And 10-year-old me, I was like, man, there was a lot of cute girls out there, so I was excited. And Darian's racing, and as he's crossing the finish line, Darian pops a willy like a Dark night. It was like a knight in shining armor. I shed a singular tear watching it go down. And he crosses the finish line, popping this willy. And the girls go nuts. They're like, ah, oh, Darian, oh my God. I was like, he's not even from here. So I have the thought, <laughs> clearly, I have to pop a wheelie now. Fun fact about little 10-year-old Josh. At that point, up until that point in my life, 
I had never successfully popped a willy. So, now it's my turn. On your marks. Get set. Fake gunshot. Go! Off to the races. I'm spanking this dude. I'm destroying him. So much so, I'm thinking about dinner. I was like, you know what? I may not even stop. I may just roll right into the kitchen. Give me some rice and gravy, some meatloaf. After this win, this is in a bag. I'm about two yards out from the finish line, and I can see it. It's calling my name. I can hear them now. Pop that willy. I can hear all the nicknames they're going to call me. They're going to call me Papa Willie. <laughs> Got a little, snuck a little dad joke in there. Free Willie was also on that list, but I decided to X that one out. And so, about two yards out, and I was like, not only am I going to pop the Willie to finish the race like Darian, I'm going to start two yards out. And I'm gonna ride that sucker all the way to mama's kitchen. Here I go. I can feel myself morphing into a young Fabio in his prime. My pecs grew, my hair grew 10 inches. I even did one of these. And so, my front tire is laying in the wheel. I'm like almost there. My front tire hits the ground and I have an intrusive thought. Who's had an intrusive thought ever in their life? Those suck, right? I had an intrusive thought. My brain went, uh-oh. By the time my front tire hit the ground, my back tire was in the air. And my thought was, two wheelies? <laughs> That's new. I didn't think I could do one. And before I knew, I am tumbling like a tire in God knows what direction. I destroy my face. I destroy my legs. Just all scarred up. Scars that look like tattoos. Just crazy scars. Not only was I not the cool kid, not only did the girls not scream for my wheelie, but most importantly, I lost the race. I lost the race. The spiritual implication behind Stay Down, and we're going to visit this in Scripture in just a second, Spiritual implication behind it all. <clears throat> when scripture references or speaks to us about staying down in our lives, is so that we don't, listen to me, so that we don't lose the race. God wants us, God has designed us to win this race. The race of faith. The race of family. The race of business. The race of life. This is the, the importance of 
of us staying rooted, solid in what we believe when tests and trials come because the Bible promise, the Bible makes a lot of promises. One thing the Bible promises us, you ready? Is that there will be many trials and tribulations. I'm telling you that, that even the scripture says, I tell you this so that you may have peace. That's how it starts. And I tell you this so you may have peace and relief. So on top of going through the trial, you're not carrying the burden of shame of feeling like it's always personal. It's not. It's not always your fault. Because that's the first thing we do. As soon as we get weak, that's when shame goes, my time to shine. Let me slip through that crack real quick and make them think it's all because of them. <clears throat> so, the first passage of scripture, I'm going to kind of parallel and try to bring some correlation between two passages of scripture. One passage, passage number one, the first one we're going to read is of Noah. The second passage we're going to read is of Jesus. So here we go. Genesis 7, verses 1 through 5. Genesis 7, verses 1 through 5. Okay. Then the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark. We're going to come back to that. The Bible preaches without even preaching sometimes. Sometimes that's just. The Lord says to Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various <clears throat> kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, I will send on the earth. I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I've made, and Noah did all the Lord commanded him. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Then Jesus, make sure in the same spot. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We're coming back to that. To be tempted by the devil. After 40 days and 40 nights, somebody say 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days. He was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him. It is written. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil, this verse eight, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me, said the devil. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him. What? Only. Then the devil left him and angels and angels came and attended him. So. Two quick little parallels that I want to draw between these two passages. Since 40 days and 40 nights is in the sermon title, I want to tell you what the Bible is generally referring to when 40 days and 40 nights comes up. It's talking about a period that a person enters into where it is a trial or a tri tribulation or a hard time or a test or Something of that nature, okay? The second correlation. And this is, this is my, my favorite one, honestly. I'm going to read Genesis 7, just the beginning, one more time. 
the Lord, hear me, the Lord then said to Noah, go. I want to read Matthew 4, if we can get that up one more time, just the beginning. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Isn't that interesting? Two people here in the Bible, Jesus, Noah, both go into a period, 40 days or 40 nights, being t- whether it's a test, whether it's a trial, whether it's a hard time, whether it's a temptation. And those passages start with the Lord calling them. And I know you may think, like, well, whoa, that's, Josh, just a little bit, it's a little bit confusing. But here's just an interesting thought I would like to throw out. Because many of us, I'm sure, in this room and watching online and in our communities are discouraged. And we're discouraged because many of us think that God is either abandoning or is leaving us in something, a hard time, a trial, whatever it is. We think that God is leaving us in something when maybe, just a thought, God could be leading us through something to the thing that he's called and created us for. Sometimes the tests and the trials and the winds, it comes and we think it's the end. We think, oh, this is how I die. Mm -mm. The Bible exemplifies otherwise. That some of the things you may be going through, you ready? You may be going through. This is not it. This is not the end. The only way to is through. So I hope that encourages somebody in the room watching online. Maybe even that's a message you can share with your family or whatever that. What you're going through right now is not a reflection of your forever or the the pain and the the trial and the turmoil is, you know, because sometimes I think we confuse, because pain is a, and I, Pastor Chad mentioned this earlier, pain is a tool that's, that's used to strengthen us. I know that's a hard word. It's hard for me to hear, but it's true. But here's what we more so got to understand about God, is that there's a difference between things or tools but especially when it's the experiences in our life. There's a difference between what God uses and what God causes. Sometimes we think God is the pain in our life. Uh Uh-uh. Sometimes we think God is the storm in our life. Uh Uh-uh. The Bible shows us, especially in the example of storms, God is not the storm. God is with you in the storm. Because what happens is a storm hits, you see a storm, you see Jesus, you see a storm, you see Jesus, you see a storm, and you're like, uh, clearly this has something to do. But the Bible says, take heart. I've overcome the world because there will be many trials and tribulations. Okay? I'm going to move because I'm running out of time. We got to harness the pain. Got to be able to do that. That is how we strengthen. That is how we grow. And it's unfortunately no way around it. You know, I'm bad at math. Been bad at math my whole life. I would honestly go as far to say as I'm trash at math. Like, it's just like horrific. Um, it's just never been my strong suit ever. 
I remember being in a youth conference some years ago. I'm not going to name that number. And already math bothers me because I'm like, there are certain maths where like we're adding letters. That's unique, right? Why is that happening? Never going to have to use that. Cool. I go to this youth conference. And at this youth conference, they were giving us some spiritual goodness and truth and phrases, and they were wording them in like the form of math equations. And I was like, oh my God, it's already, it's, I'm already in youth group. You're going to make me do math too? Anyway, but, the, but there was one that stuck with me, and this is kind of the frame, and I got three points, and we're off to lunch. So we about to do some math in here. Somebody say math. Ew. So, here we go. Here's the first one. God plus nothing equals everything. God plus nothing equals everything. And I know that doesn't sound great because you're like, oh, Josh, I don't want nothing. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 26, says this. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life uh, for my sake will find it. Here we go. For what will it profit a man? To gain the whole world and forfeit, or as we like to say, lose because of Toby Mac, and lose his soul. First Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 3 says this If I speak in the tongues of men, <clears throat> and of angels but have not love I am a noisy gong or clanging symbol and if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but I have not love I am nothing if I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love I gain what? nothing Nothing. I'm going to say this quick point. We'll move on because I'm late. But let's put our business hats on for one second. If you're kind of struggling with like, well, Josh, how does this make sense? Put our business hats on. Would you rather own a few jars of milk or the cow? Yeah, you'll take the cow. I'll take the cow too. Would you want to own a few products or the factory? Right? I don't just want the stuff. I want the source. So God. Plus nothing equals everything. Next point. Everything minus God equals nothing. That's pretty easy. Everything minus God equals nothing. Let me see. Sorry. Actually, Mama said I read the, the wrong scripture for the, the, the other one. Okay. Put Matthew 6 up on the screens. Oh, gosh, this is so long. <laughs> Scratch it. We're not doing it. I don't have time. Everything. Mine is God is absolutely nothing. Okay. It, it, it really boils down to one simple point, one simple word. Purpose. Well, Josh, what is that? What does that mean? Oh, here's what it means. Stuff is great, by the way. I love stuff. I spend way too much time at the mall. I love things. But what's the point of like accumulating like 
all this stuff? What's the point of being abundantly blessed and not knowing the purpose of being blessed is to be a blessing? What's the point of having all this stuff if it's not connected to its purpose? That's why there's so many people with so much stuff and they have nothing inside. Come on. That's why. I love self-help. I think that stuff's cool. I'm a big Oprah fan. Woot. But here's the thing. What's the point in becoming your highest, best, truest self if you don't know what to do with him or her when you get there what's the point point? and it's very hard to fully tap in to the to the full functionality of the thing without being first tapped into the creator of the thing Everything minus God is nothing because God's the point. God's the purpose. Amen? Last point. I think I made it, bro. Last point. Keys can come up. Guitar can come up. Whoever's coming up. This is a rough one. About to have a little rough landing, a little turbulent landing, but... It's going to be good. We're going to have a little upswing. Here we go. God plus just anything, just anything equals settling. Mm. Yeah, I'm fired. I'm joking. Pastor Chad hates when I crack that joke. All right. Isaiah 40. Verse 31, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They should run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. One of the number one causes, not the only, but one of the top causes to settling in a lot of people's lives is impatience. And look, you're looking at the poster child. Impatience. We get tired of waiting on the thing that God has for us. And we fall into the belief that just having just anything is better than having nothing at all. Settling. But I do want to say this, that God will forever, 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 forever love you. He will never leave you. Ever, 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 ever. No height, no death, no life, nor death can ever separate you from the love of God. That's Bible. David even said, even if I make my bed in Sheol, which is hell, not the actual hell, hell on earth, it, it, which is what David is referring to. But even if I made my bed in hell, you'll be there. That's how faithful God is. So he's never going to leave you. So don't think that's what I mean. But here's the reality. God isn't going to force us to align with the best that he has for us. One of my favorite quotes says, God will do what you and I can't do. But God won't do what we won't do. What we refuse to do. Because God has fully equipped us for that. Like some of us forget that self-control is a fruit of the spirit. That that's given to us. What's the point of not settling, of knowing that everything minus God 
is nothing and God plus nothing equals everything. What, what's, what's the point? What's the point of staying down? What's the point? I'll preach this till I'm blue in the face because this is the whole reason why I stand on a platform or not a platform. I don't care. I could be in a grocery store bothering you with this. John 10.10 10. For the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I come that they may have life and have more abundantly. That's the importance of staying down. That's what winning the race looks like more than abundance that only comes from God, the creator. That's the point. And it's going to be very hard to share out there what we don't first receive in here. So the change is like what Michael Jackson says. If you want to make the world a bet to place, take a look at who? And make the change. It's in here. The more than abundant life is in here. So it doesn't matter whether times are good or times are hard, the abundant life is in here. It doesn't matter if I'm in a trial or if I'm in a great season, the abundant life is in here. What I have, the world cannot take away. Amen? Put your hands together if you got something out the word this morning. All right. Let's pray. God, I thank you for each and every life, each and every story, each and every individual represented here in this room and we pray that your more than abundant life is made inspiring to the hearts of each and every person in this room by your spirit that you speak whether it's through dreams whether it's just during the day whatever it is inspire us to take hold of the life that you have called us to we love you we thank you we worship you with everything we have in Jesus name I pray everybody say it all right. Lastly, I want to make no bones about the fact that there may be, sorry, I'm supporting this. Stop. <laughs> I want to make no bones about the fact that there are people in this room who don't know Jesus. So let's pray. Repeat after me, please. Dear Jesus, I want to know you. I want to follow you. I want to, I want to love you with everything inside of me and I want to share that love with the world around me to see the change to see the impact to see the purpose that you want to see so I love you I thank you and I worship you in Jesus name I pray everybody said amen alright let's worship